Hi, I'm Carol Grape with Crafting Change, and we're going to be turning this flannel shirt into a dignity cover for our charity partners. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the sleeves off at about a one inch margin here so that we have enough to fold over and sew going forward. I'm, I'm showing the sewing technique as opposed to the serging technique, but you can do a lot of this with a serger. So I've lined up my seams along here so that I can cut the whole sleeve off at one time. And I'm just gonna start, and I'm just using my um, gauge and I'm gonna just continue to move it around until I get it all cut off. I forgot to tell you that one of the first things I do is remove any labels on the back of the shirt and I remove any buttons on the side of the shirt before I start cutting, cutting it up. The first thing I'm gonna do now after cutting the sleeves off is I'm going to cut the front of the shirt from the back of the shirt and I'm just going to go up the side of the seam on both sides and go right up through my sleeve area and then I'll just cut this side as well. Cut this up the side seam. I am now going to cut one inch down from the yoke on the back of the shirt. If you don't have a yoke on the shirt that you're using, a good idea would be to find a shirt in your house that has a yoke kind of measure and see where it is from the base of the collar and then do a line straight across the back of the shirt to cut it. But again, I want an inch border so that I can I have a hem that I can fold over later and sew in place. One of the things we want to determine is how much opening we need to keep on the shirt so that it will fit over somebody's head. I tried it at the second button down and it was a little too tight. So I've determined that I need to keep that button open. So I am gonna just go above the top. I'm gonna to sew this just above the top of this button. And what we're gonna do is we button up the shirt. We're gonna sew across the placket, go all the way down to the bottom of the shirt and come back up and um, sew across here again so that we've closed up the whole front of the shirt. I did use my zipper foot to sew along the placket so that it would all be caught under the thread so that it's nice and secure at this point. One of the things I forgot to mention is when I first started, I washed the shirt because it's a used shirt. I washed it and I ironed it before I started my project. One of the great things about using the flannel shirt is we already have our flannel piece for the inside. Our next step is going to be to put these two pieces face to face and we're going to pin pin this together and uh, sew down the sides first. What I want to do is I do want to make sure that the we start pinning from the top. We line up the sleeve holes and you can pin or clip at this point. I'm just going to pin this pin this piece in place right here and then I'm going to pin it on the other side get it lined up again we want to line those seam seams for the sleeve up and I'm going to see how this works as far as how flat it is and that's going to be pretty flat across there and then I'm going to line up the side seams. We're gonna be cutting off the bottom of the shirt, so I'm not worrying about how it lines up at the bottom. I made the mistake on the first shirt I did to line up at the bottom first and then uh, and pin it, and it didn't work out as well when I wanted to join these, these sections of the shirt. So I'm going to actually trim this up a little bit, and then I'm going to um, clip it together and then sew up, sew up the sides on both sides first. Now that I've sewed up the sides, I'm going to trim the bottom and I'm gonna keep the shape as much as possible. Um, I'm just gonna trim around this base here. I'm going on the shorter side. It's gonna be a little hard to cut across the placket, but 
you can kind of work your way through that and then cut up this side. I used a 3 8 inch seam up the side and I'm going to do a 3 8 inch seam here and then I'm going to turn it right side out and iron it. Depending on your sewing machine, you might need to use a hump jumper to get over the placket area when you're sewing around the bottom. After stitching the bottom, I turned it right side out, took it over to my iron and ironed it flat. My next step now is going to be to fold down the seam for the yoke. I started in the middle and worked my way out to the ends. This cent center section was a little ruffly because of the way the shirt was sewn with a gather in the back. I'm going to continue across and then I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and sew across the whole seam. The next step is to take the shirt over to the ironing board and, and iron this seam open. Then we are going to clip around the armhole and then we are going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch it down. I am this in this case it's going to be a little long. I'm going to end up trimming the back um, lining down farther but I want to make sure I have this all stitched down and then I have something to work with later. The end by the yoke can get pretty thick and sometimes the sewing machine won't go through there and you will have to hand stitch this end or this end depending on how thick it is. In this case I couldn't get my sewing machine to go over that hump. It's a pretty thick seam right there but a little hand stitching and you're good to go. My next step was to take this over to the to the ironing board after I folded it down fairly close to where my top stitch is on the placket. I'm going to go a little bit higher on this one because we've got enough room here with this last button being open. Uh, I am, before I stitch it, going to close this button so that the placket is nice and straight. I'm now going to come under here. Since I ironed it, I can now trim it to about an inch across so we don't have so much fabric underneath. Once I've trimmed that edge, I turned it back under and I'm pinning it all the way across. The reason for this is we don't want it to shift while we are while we are stitching it on the sewing machine. We want to keep that end nice and flat. If you have a shirt with a pocket, you would like to keep the pocket open so the wearer can put things in this pocket while they're eating. What we did here when, when sewing on the back panel is it was on the other side, so we pinned where the pocket was on either side so we could stop. We back stitched when we got to the pocket. We stitched all the way across here backstitched when we got to the pocket, picked it up over here, backstitched, and finished our sewing. After the shirt is completed with top stitching and everything, then you go to a little hand sewing. What you want to do is slip stitch across where the pocket is what, to sew it to the back of the pocket. What you don't want to do is pick accidentally pick up the front of the pocket. So a good thing to do is either to put a piece of cardboard or something inside the pocket so that when you're stitching back here it won't catch the front of the pocket. It's a little hard to do it with your hand just because there's a lot of fabric here so I found it much easier to put a piece of cardboard in there. Because this shirt doesn't have a pocket my last step is just to top stitch around here and my shirt will be done. This is the completed Dignity cover that can be buttoned up at the neck so food doesn't go down inside once they've put it on, and it's now ready to go to our charity partners.